In, in my mind right now, home recording and studio recording are actually almost exactly the same. Um, the biggest difference is the size of your room. Usually, you know, you have a really great drum room uh, that, you know, might be the size of a basketball court. That might be hard to have at home. But uh, to have great mics, great mic prees, and then, you know, a set of you know, Pro Tools or even, you know, Digio 2 or whatever it is that you have, all those things can uh, record any source or any music that you want as, as good as you can do in the studio. Um, so if you've, you know, if you've got a couple of APIs or Neve mic prees and, and, and a good microphone, uh, you can make virtually the same quality recording that, that anybody else is making. The only difference would be, again, the, 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 the quality of the room that you're in and how much money you've decided to put in in wall treatments and, and stuff like that. The biggest thing is uh, you, everyone always is trying to focus on, I need to make it sound good. And the truth is, the, the, nope, if you're a good A&R guy, you don't care what it sounds like. You care, what the, you care what, that the band is making a good sound, but what you really want to hear is a great song. What you really want to hear is a great point of view and a great singer. Something that you know, has you know, a, a lyric and a melody that can go out and, and capture the public's imagination. That's something that I like to sign or like to see. I've heard the most pristinely recorded demos that you've ever heard. I mean, like, sounds like, uh, you know, Earth, Wind and & Fire and Stevie Wonder got together and it was like the most perfect, you know, how beautiful those recordings were. I've heard that with absolutely terrible songs and those people, they don't get signed. And it, you know, it might fool, you know, the, the younger A&R guy might go, oh my God, this sounds amazing, I gotta take it to my boss. And then, and then the senior VP of A&R listens to it and goes, you know, I know this sounds really good, but really, there's nothing going on here. There's no artistic point of view. Um, we, I, we can't sell this pass. Mm -hmm. So, but you bring in a raw, I mean, uh, I remember actually when there was a younger guy, well, I was a younger guy too at the time, um, uh, when Nirvana's Bleach was going around, and I remember when it came into Warner Brothers, um, you know, there was sort of a split uh, decision on it. Some people were like, oh my God, it sounds so like raw and dangerous. And, um, you know, what kind of music is this? And, and that was one side. The other side was, this is the most amazing songwriter we've ever heard. We got to try to get this. Now, of course, we lost it to Geffen, but, um, you know, if you remember how raw those early Nirvana recordings were, I mean, that's a good example of why the songwriting is what matters. A uh, producer can definitely help. Uh, you know, that's actually what, uh, I mean, that's what I do on a, you know, on a larger scale of, uh, you know, taking, you, you, a lot of times what I do is I take a very established band and try to have them, you know, either, you know, get back to the top or stay on top. And uh, so let's say now you're, you're a garage band. If I was to work with a garage band or even if it's just like, I mean, I remember this, I was, I was 14 years old and I was learning how to play every song I could possibly learn how to play in guitar. And there was a guy down the street that was 18 or 19 and he had all these riffs. He had all these other things that I didn't know about yet. And he said, no, when you put your, when you put the mic against the, the, the cone and if it sounds dark, you know, you can move it in or out and that'll get your brightness or darkness depending uh, and, and all these little tips start to help. So anybody really can be helpful. And the idea is um, that you're trying to, if a band, you're trying to capture the chemistry of, let's say there's, you have a four piece band um, and there's two guitars, bass and drums. Just by the nature of the way these guys play, they're gonna make a sound. And if it's a good one, if it's one of those ones that I kind of like say are like sort of touched by God, it's like, oh my God, you know, like the chemistry, let's say, of, of, of the three guys in Green Day, they make that sound. That's what they sound like. That's how they, they were born to play. Uh, if your band has that, then the, thing, the trick to do is to get all this machinery over here to actually enhance it, to help it. Not to, not to pull it in a different direction, but rather to, to help it. Um, and you do need a lot of experience to understand how to use the technology to actually make the... Uh, you have to understand music, first of all, to know why certain things, like for example, like why a snare drum should be wetter or drier. Let's say the, the BPMs are real fast. You don't want a long snare reverb. It'll sound mushy. It'll be coming over into the next snare hit. Um, so, you know, then therefore keep, keep the drum sound tight. And then keep the guitar player tight 
and all of a sudden you'll have a really punchy sound coming out of your speakers. So unfortunately there's as many examples of, of that as there are bands. So in a way you have to just study music like crazy and I think bands are responsible for studying that stuff. Of course their, their, their focus point should be performance and writing and performing but a producer can help with all that other stuff to help make the, the uh, not just the recording sound better, but also sort of point, be able to take a look in the band and say, you know, when you do that, that's your best thing. That's awesome. Keep doing that one. That when you do that, you should either work on it or potentially, you know, decide maybe it's not the thing you should do. Because um, if you really look at bands, you'll start to say like, um, a style emerges. Like you look at the police, for example. Like look at the way all three of those guys have such a such a vibrant personality on each of their instruments. Um, that came from whittling away. I mean, you can imagine. Uh, 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 oh my God, I forgot the drummer's name. <laughs> Sorry. Stuart imagine Stuart Copeland uh, coming out and playing sort of a like a bombastic kind of like uh, like Bon Jovi kind of. <laughs> You'd never hear him do that. Right, you never, you know, because he would. He's, I'm not doing that, but I'm gonna go. Da, 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 right, he would do all that kind of stuff, and therefore that was his style. So in a way, it's a lot of it is becoming focused as to who you are, and a, and a producer can help you do that. Uh, can help a band recognize what's great about it.